It's space weather! Checking out the sun in 171 angstroms. Sunspot 2730 has degraded out of existence. We've got a little bit of active magnetism going on and a coronal hole about to rotate in. Also, I think we see some ejecta down here again, right in that area. Let that play through. Yeah, it looks like a filament erupted heading out in that direction. Let's look at the 304 angstroms view. I think those filaments get sucked back into the sun. We'll look at the Lasco C2 to see if anything actually got ejected. And here's your Lasco C2. little bit of a CME headed out here to the east. No big deal, doesn't appear to be earth facing. Moving on to the 193 angstrom view. We do have a diffuse coronal hole rotating in here and in this area. And next let's look at the magnetic connection situation. Three hundred and thirty-five angstroms. All right. So we've got dense fields in this area. We've got fields pointed at Earth in this area. Let's see if they're connected by going to subbaseweathernews.com. So the last day. X-ray fluxing totally flatlined. BTBZ is jumping around quite a bit. Some funky looking data there on the Discover. And so no phi angle signal, so no apparent magnetic connection with that coronal hole. And coronal hole wind speed, I mean coronal wind speed, coronal. Solar wind speed has dropped. Let's look at it in real time. And there's your real-time solar wind. Solar wind speed has dropped under 500 kilometers per second down to 468. Solar wind density, 4.96 cubics per protons per cubic centimeter. So that's a, that's a weakening stream there. And let's go look at the rest of the data here. So magnetometer is actually pretty high. It only got down to about 75 nanotesla yesterday, and now it's on its way back up. KP is down to one. We would not be surprised at all if that went back to, down to zero as the solar wind speed diminishes. We don't see any kind of sunspots. Sunspot 2730 degraded and vanished as fast as it appeared. Electron flux is quite high, and we're expecting significant charging hazards to start soon. Your F2 ionosphere layer is already charged up today. We're getting this bubble-like anomaly here by South America as we've had for a few days. And that's going to create a big charge disparity in this area as the Earth rotates in. Here's your auroral forecast, very weak, especially in the Northern Hemisphere. Let's go back to solar ham for a minute here as they put the magnetometer right on their homepage. And there's the former sunspot 2730. It's degraded to the point where it's no longer a sunspot. See that? No umbra. No umbra means no sunspot, folks. It was nice while it lasted, but then it was gone. Let's look at the earthquake situation. Over the last 12 hours or so, going back to about midnight Zulu time. 
Argentina got a 4.7. Tonga, a 5.1, 4.7 in the Philippines. 4.9 in Papua New Guinea. It just doesn't seem to stop there. Northern Mariana Islands had a deep one at 4.4, so they should be on alert for a 5.4. East Timor gets a deep 4.5. They should be on alert for a 5.5. Japan gets a 4.8. Another one in the South Sandwich Islands. A spot of geomagnetic unrest that has been emerging, making people very worried about magnetic excursions. Also, there was a 4.4 in Decatur, Tennessee. How about that? Not every day you hear about that one. Let's zoom in. Awfully far east quite far from the New Madrid zone. Four point four at nine kilometers depth. Probably a frack quake. Is it a frack quake? Who knows? Also a three point three right nearby. Some rocking in Alaska. Let's just look at this uh South Sandwich Island quake. And it doesn't want to work. There we go. A 5.3 at 33 kilometers. A recent site of geomagnetic unrest. Next, let's take a look at an article from CosmosMagazine.com. Are spiders and fungi less toxic alternatives to synthetic pesticides? You ever heard of people buying ladybugs to put in their garden? Or using the chrysanthemum extract as a insecticide? Well, those are better than chemicals. I was not aware fungus could be used as a, as a pesticide, but it's an interesting article. Here's an Australian funnel spider that contains venom which only kills certain insects. Quite interesting. Maybe it'll give you some ideas about your gardening. Links to the article will be in the description. Next, let's look at another article from fizz.org. Arctic's record warming driving broad change in environment. Geez, the Arctic is so warm that it's cold. Let's talk about polar bears for a minute. See this cute polar bear here, which will stalk you in the Arctic for weeks before it figures out a way to kill you? Well, these things aren't killed by warm. When it gets warm, polar bears have an easier time finding food sources, their main source being seals. If it's too icy where they're located, they can't get through the ice to get to the seals, and they lose their food source. So let's just debunk the, the global warming is killing the polar bears narrative right away, because that's complete ridiculous nonsense by people who don't know what a polar bear does. Well, let's move on. Persistent heat records have rattled the fragile Arctic for each of the past five years. A record-long warming streak. Oh, my gosh. Warming is heating Arctic at a record, record pace. Again, if you'd like to lose some IQ points, read this stupid article. Let's look at the Greenland ice mass budget. I mean, it must have dropped, right? Oh, oh man. Let's see, here's the average, 1981 to 2010, and there it is in 2018. Boy, oh boy, all the ice is gone. Oh my gosh. Oh, we're just wringing our hands about this. And uh, uh, there's the current situation. They're talking about 2018, which is this brownish colored line here, and the whole year is above the average. So once again, fizz.org, I don't, I don't know who's publishing these articles. We don't know what the hell you're talking about. And by the way, we're also noting early winters and late springs. Well, let's look at the Arctic sea ice. Maybe it's the sea ice that's melting. Maybe that's what they're talking about. Except... 
it's not melting. It's right in the beefy part of the range. And we've got ice that's five meters thick. So, all right. That being said, now, let's look at what went on yesterday at the International Space Station. So the Russians did a spacewalk and the reason was there was a hole in the space station which was causing an air leak. Pretty dangerous situation. Uh, these guys spent nearly eight hours. There was a two millimeter hole causing an air leak. We'll leave links to it. Not exactly sure what caused it, although there is suspicion that American astronauts intentionally drilled a hole in the spacecraft in order to send home their sick astronaut, which is crazy. We hope that's not what happened. Links to that article as well. And let's take a moment to look at where the planets are located. By the way, if you get up before sunrise, look in the eastern sky, even if it's light out, you may be able to see Venus if you have a clear sky. It's super bright. We actually tried to get a little bit of footage of it yesterday, but it was too cold and I couldn't get the tripod set up correctly. So I just scrubbed that. But in any case, there's your location of your planets. Saturn will actually be at opposition soon for all of you who are interested in opposing planets. Let's go to Tropical Tidbits for one minute. Look at the Northern Hemisphere snow forecast. The Northwestern Rockies in the US and in Canada are gonna get hammered. I mean, we're talking feet of snow coming down. Let's just let the animation play through here. This forecast is through Let's see, through December 16th, it looks like. Snow all the way down in central Texas. Significant snowfall in Mexico. How about that? Snowfall in Mexico. Boy, oh boy, the planet's so hot that it's cold. And let's just look at the main driver of your weather, the jet stream. We're using the 250 millibar wind speed streamlines. Links to this also at Tropical Tidbits. And look at that meridional jet stream flow. Now this is par partially a forecast and partially a record of what just happened. We're going back to December 10th, extending that through I think the 14th see these odd vortice type patterns down here you can see the jet streams getting all jumbled up over here compression occurring over here you've got double and triple jet streams all over the place here the jet stream going almost due north What's it caused by? It's caused by the Earth's magnetic field. Which, by the way, seems to be still weakening. We're experiencing a massive polar excursion. Will the pole flip the next time the sun's poles flip? Well, we don't really know, do we? In any case, thanks for watching the video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy our content. Please refer this video to your friends. As we will be doing more daily, we welcome you to the Neo-Renaissance as we study in great detail this object here, which is completely in control of the Earth's weather. Now remember, when you're suggesting names for sun sunspots before they get named, don't drink. And if you drink,
Well, name the sunspots anyway. And don't drive.